everybody, this is Adam from A to Z's Tiny Woodshop. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this video. This is a Bible box that I made for my oldest brother um, using nothing but hand tools. Other than the lights in my shop, absolutely no electricity was used. From the beginning, I'll admit that the video is going to be pretty long compared to my other videos. I apologize if you were looking for a quick video. Um, it's long because I used a lot of hand tools and I really tried to show the amount of effort and attention to detail that went into this. My brother is extremely important to me. Um, he's my oldest brother and he lives almost 2,000 miles away or maybe even a little bit more. And I think I may have seen him two or three times in the past 10 years. But I wanted to make this video to show him um, you know just how important he is to me and uh, to honor him my brother is many things to me and many things to many people uh, to me aside from being my oldest brother um, he's an incredible father um, he's a lifelong service member of the military um, he's a super super hard worker he'll tell you that he's not the brightest bulb but I think uh, He's a lot smarter than he gives himself credit for. He's got a giant heart. He's a father, a husband, a grandfather. Um, and he's also a very, uh, a very dedicated Christian. And overall, he's just the perfect big brother. He's the kind of big brother that all little brothers wish they had and someone great to look up to. So. Um, considering his faith, I figured this would be a great way to craft something personal for him and special for him and that hopefully will mean a lot to him and um, honor his faith as well. So I decided to create a box made for uh, his Bible. Initially I was concerned about the perception of a Bible box because I didn't want it to be perceived as a place to hide the Bible or store it away or get it out of sight. Um, totally the opposite end of the spectrum. I wanted to create something that was simple yet elegant and sophisticated and classical uh, in design that would basically enhance and protect the Bible that is very special to my brother and his family. So I tried to use special care and precision and meticulous attention to detail in every aspect of crafting this and designing it and thinking about it um, because I wanted it to be something that would be worthy of housing the word of the Lord that uh, is really important and special to them. Okay, so now a little bit of getting into what I'm actually doing to explain all the background tool noises going on. Uh, basically what I've done so far is I've used a riff sawn piece of white oak. Um, I think it was four inches wide by three quarter inches thick. Um, I selected this piece because it had a nice straight grain pattern um, that was somewhat distinct um, so I, I wanted to make sure that I could wrap the grain around and have it be noticeable that the grain was wrapped around the box so um, I just trued up the edges flattened and squared um, and smoothed the face and although it didn't really need it I just uh, made sure that the uh, edges were square on the, the uh, white oak which was going to be used for the sides of the box and then I turn my attention to what I'm working on now, which is one and a quarter inch by three quarter inch strips of mahogany. Um, and I'm profiling them using hand planes to set in grooves for the raised panel lid that's gonna be in the center. And I'm gonna make this into a picture frame style border um, with 45 degree mitered corners that I'm hoping will line up with the lines in the raised panel. You might be able to see later on in the video different parts that this mahogany is some of the nicest mahogany I've ever seen. It's got a very subtle gold iridescent flake in it, and I've never seen that. I don't know what causes that, but um, I intentionally selected that for this project. Uh, now I'm just squaring up all the uh, four sides of the raised panel top as well as the mahogany bottom and I get to cutting all four of the uh, sides on the top and the bottom by hand. Um, and then afterwards I trude them up 
uh, perfectly square and smooth on my shooting board. So although it's maybe self-explanatory to many people, I'll try to explain the tools I use so far to prep the sideboard. Um, the white oak I use the bedrock 607 joiner plane, a Wood River four and a half smoothing plane, and then for the grooves on the insides of the picture frame border for the raised panel, I used a Veritas uh, small plow plane and a quarter inch um, blade that was set, I think it was a quarter inch depth and a quarter inch from one edge and maybe slightly less on the other just to give it a little room for expansion. And then I used a combination of a Wood River low angle jack plane and a Wood River uh, four and a half smoothing plane. Um, to plane the raised panel uh, edges on this. This was actually pretty fun but pretty tricky trying to get the lines from each corner to match up perfectly at 45 degrees going into the corner without taking too much off. Um, but I'm, this is the first time I've ever done it with a hand plane and it came out pretty well. So now I'm turning my attention to actually cutting the 45 degree miters for the picture frame border to go around the raised panel, uh, which raised panels are usually traditionally done with rails and styles and uh, mortise and tenons in the corners, but I wanted this to look like a picture frame. So uh, I use my Japanese pull saw and a homemade, I think it's called a poor man's miter box. Uh, Paul Sellers has uh, a decent video on how to make this. It's really easy, really simple, and really effective and fairly accurate. Um, but that's available on Paul, Paul Sellers' channel if you want to check that out. This is my shooting board and you'll see me use it many different times throughout this video. I use it all the time. It's probably one of the most used tools in my shop. I got the design from Jay Bates on his woodworking channel. He's got a couple really good videos on his channel about um, his shooting board and shooting board uh, attachments. Absolutely anytime I cut a mitered uh, cut on any board, uh, I always use the shooting board to make sure that it's true and accurate. Uh, and a lot of times I'll do the same thing for a square cut on a smaller piece. Um, but check out that video if you're interested in how to make it. It's I, I can't say enough good things about it. I couldn't believe how simple it was. Uh, and you'll see here how accurate it is as well. You can see here that using the shooting board really showed you how much you uh, need to take off or how close you are to being perfectly um, a perfect 45 degree cut uh, and how much just a few strokes can take off. And like I said, it's absolutely precise and super easy to use. So then I just uh, turned my attention to actually throwing some glue on the uh, mitered cuts of the picture frame border. And I didn't use any glue to attach the raised panel to the picture frame border because afterwards I'm going to put a 1 8 inch spline in the mitered cuts on the outside of the picture frame border mahogany. And because of the size of this raised panel, um, I didn't want to constrict it with any uh, for the expansion or contraction and have that cause the mitered picture frame border to split and come up, uh, come apart. So there was no glue attaching the mahogany to the white oak. It was just attaching the four corners. And then I also used a Bessie clamp. Uh, I think they're called a box clamp. Um, I've tried a couple different kinds and this is the one I like the best. Uh, it gets a really super tight, accurate seal and it's pretty adjustable as you uh, clamp it down if needed. Um, but fairly easy, really secure and it works really well. And then uh, I just wiped away any excess glue squeeze out just to make it easier and a better appearance uh, when I start to finish the panel and the picture frame border. Top is all glued up and drying. I moved on to 
cutting the sides, again using the Japanese pull saw and Paul, uh, Paul Sellers poor man's miter station. Um, I find that using a clamp to hold the, a larger piece in really helps it keep it stable so you don't wobble around and you get a finer cut. And then you'll see me move on again for each cut um, and check it for uh, 45 degrees. And then I also, like I said, every time I, I cut a 45 degree miter I always uh, go over to the shooting board and just enhance it. When I first started cutting 45 degree miters, whether it was for a box frame or a picker frame or what, I struggled with getting perfect joints and, and not having gaps. And I came to the conclusion and learned one thing, that it doesn't matter if your joints are exactly 45 or 49.1 and 51.9. Or What matters the most is right here, that the two sides that are parallel to each other absolutely have to be the same exact length. Um, so you'll see me here. I always uh, try to just use a chisel and take a very small chamfer uh, off the back edge of the board that I'm going to be using on the shooting plane um, and that just prevents any tear out or blow out on the back edge um, but the most important thing is in addition to having uh, angles or a degree uh, that matches up is to have an equal uh, equal length on both parallel sides now that that's accomplished and I'm certain that I have the 45 degree I know that as long as the other two are 45 degrees in the same length, it's going to match up well. So since this mahogany was 3 quarters inches, I used my uh, Veritas marking gauge to scribe a mark a quarter inch in on each side. And then I measured the inside groove of the box and set the, uh, the depth in from the side uh, to scribe the marks there. And then I used a combination of different planes. Um, this is the Veritas uh, skew rabbit plane, which I use to cut the rabbits, starting with the edge grain or end grain first, and then moving to the side grain. And then um, I also used the Veritas medium shoulder plane here, just to uh, square up the inside corners of uh, these rabbits. And the end result is I was left with a pretty sure it was a quarter inch, I know it was a quarter inch uh, wide rabbit that, uh, I don't know how deep the rabbit was, I think it was probably about a quarter inch or thereabouts, um, just to match the inside groove. I did leave it a little bit of wiggle room, again because it's a little bit of a larger board, just for expansion and contraction width wise. And then I glued up the mitered corners of the box frame, and once again used the same Bessie uh, clamp to clamp them all together. So I ended up using two of these Bessie clamps, one on top and one on the bottom, just to make sure I could get a really nice tight um, joint between uh, the boards on the sides. And you can see there that it still allows you to adjust it a little bit while still holding it uh, nice and secure. And then I just uh, use a damp towel or damp paper towel to clean up any glue squeeze out on the four corners. Now for the hardest part of this entire project. This really made me miss my uh, spline jig for my table saw uh, sled. Um, but I cut the splines by hand with the Japanese dovetail saw, uh, which has a really thin kerf. Um, it took a lot of time to mark them out, and I'm really horrible at cutting a straight line. I actually, when I do dovetails, I have to chisel probably more than I cut, because uh, I can't get that close to the line. But um, I used the Japanese dovetail saw and a 1 8 inch mortise chisel to uh, cut just along the lines, and then... Um, try to chisel them out with the mortise chisel. Um, this is not only time in uh, intensive to actually lay out uh, for each corner, but it took a lot of time to do each one and they weren't anywhere near as accurate as I wanted to. I think they, in the end they came out well and I did good at hiding a lot of mistakes, but um, yeah, it, it definitely made me miss my uh, spline jig attachment for the saw sled.
So in addition to doing uh, four splines on each corner of the box, I also did one eighth inch spline on each corner of the mahogany picture frame border. So this is uh, just cutting the uh, eighth inch thick white oak spline that was going to go in each corner of uh, the mahogany picture frame. Uh, I didn't show each corner or uh, each process just because it was really time intensive and this video was long enough as it is. And then I moved on to flattening um, the mahogany splines that are going to go into the corners of the box. So because they were cut by hand, the uh, splines, some of them were a little bit looser than I usually like, but um, I kind of use this trick here, you'll see in a second, where I apply glue liberally, but then I also use some, uh, some of the sawdust from cutting them, which kind of helps fill any gaps where the spline may have been a little bit too loose. Um, kind of like making your own little uh, wood filler. Works pretty well. I've seen a lot of people do the same uh, technique on uh, dovetails. And here I am doing the same thing, uh, inserting the white oak uh, spline into the mahogany uh, picture frame border. This one's a little bit tight and needed a few taps with a rubber mallet. Uh, a really special part. Um, basically what this is, it's a product called Tom Palisades Transfer Paper and a gel medium called Liquitex. Um, basically what I did is I found a scripture um, that really I thought had sentimental value and I went on the computer and um, designed it with the font and the size that I wanted and then create a mirror image and print it on this special paper and then use the gel medium uh, to paint onto the substrate and then you apply the, uh, the mirror image of the picture or writing and um, uh, squeeze it out and then let it dry uh, and then 24 hours later you just wet the back of the paper and peel it off. Um, I've used it several times, it works fairly well, um, but it's the only way I knew to really get a quality uh, transfer of the scripture onto the inside of the box. And like I said, I, I think being uh, his little brother and my brother being uh, a Christian, um, I thought that scripture had a, a nice sentimental uh, value to it. Uh, so then I turned my attention to actually cutting off the mahogany splines as well as the maple, uh, sorry, the uh, white oak splines in the picture frame border and just used a Japanese pole saw to do that and then a the combination of my Wood River uh, low angle block plane to get down to the surface area of the box sides and finalized it with uh, my Wood River smoothing plane um, prior to sanding it for finish. For some reason, even though I saw it in real time in real life, I love watching faster sped up videos of uh, smoothing out uh, splines, especially in the high contrast like this in boxes that I make uh, in the videos. Um, it, it's just so cool seeing that transition from something that looked really rough to something that looks fine and smooth. So I have to apologize uh, for all the viewers that are were looking for or wanted to see it. Um, I was making a lot of progress working on the box on this day and I had set up the camera and had everything ready um, to cut off the box top. And uh, you know, I got the camera in position and everything and then like an idiot, I didn't hit record and I just went and started cutting off the box and I thought I was recording it the whole time and then would just go back and edit certain parts and include what I wanted, but I never hit record. Um, and you can tell by the previous frame that that was earlier in the day and the sun is now shining on my bench so it took a long time so if anything I saved you guys from having to view that but it was 
I guess I would say really simple. Um, I just marked with the marking gauge around the outside of the box where I wanted to cut it off and then uh, use the Japanese pull saw, which now what I'm doing after lunch is uh, using my smoothing plane to try to make sure that the top of the box and the bottom of the box that's going to be attached to the picture frame border um, are not only square edges but that they made up well. Um, this was probably the second time where I missed having the table saw. I usually cut my box tops off on table saw and having that fence is really precise uh, but doing it by hand and trying to file, follow the marking knife line or the marking gauge line rather um, square through the entire square cut was pretty pretty difficult but in the end uh, after a lot of work it came out alright so I just uh, glued the top part that I cut off using some calls uh, I glued it to the uh, picture frame border I think there was about a 5 eighths of an inch overhang um, of the picture frame border and then I moved to cutting some quarter inch white oak dowels and using my bit and brace um, again hand tools only to drill through the mahogany border and into um, the white oak box frame underneath and then I glued up the uh, quarter inch dowels and uh, inserted them into the holes. I don't think it was absolutely necessary um, or essential but I figured adding the dowels in a symmetrical pattern around the picture frame border not only added uh, structural integrity keeping the picture frame border secure to the top part of the cutoff box but it also added a little bit of uh, aesthetics as well. So after adding a little bit of glue to the dowels, inserting them into the holes and then hammering them home with a plastic mallet, uh, I just used the Japanese pull saw again to trim them somewhat flush and then a chisel and a uh, block plane to smooth them out nice and uh, flush to the surface. I wanted this box to have a lift off removable lid instead of having hinges on it so I used um, some quarter inch thick mahogany again just to go with the contrasting theme uh, to create some mitered corners for a little box inside the lid of the box uh, that would recess down into the main portion of the box when it's closed. Um, I think afterwards I also put some uh, magnets in the top and bottom of the uh, top of the lid and well, bottom of the lid and top of the box. It just helps it stay a little more secure. And you see this is pretty self-explanatory. I just used the uh, pull saw to cut them to a rough length and then finished up the 45 degree miter again with the shooting saw and a 45 degree attachment. Last summer I picked up this tiny little Stanley plane at a yard sale for a dollar and I bought it just as kind of like a gag slash decoration for the shop but uh, after putting an edge on it, it works really well for these types of purposes so I just rounded off the edges. And now that it's almost complete and all coming together, I just sanded all edges and surfaces that were visible. Um, just a rough sanding to uh, 320 grit I think it was. And then I moved on to applying, uh, I think, two or three different coats of uh, spray-on shellac. Um, I didn't want the finish to be too glossy, and I didn't apply any oil or anything to enhance the green. My whole theme with this entire box was to keep it simple and natural. Um, and I think that explains a lot about my brother and his, his personality, his character. Just, you know, super refined. Uh, but he's a very simplistic kind of guy. Um, so I wanted the box to kind of mirror my perception of him to me. Um, I think it, I did well, and I think it came out well, and I th really think he's going to appreciate it. Um, it was a fun project, and like I said, I, I did it all with hand tools uh, because I wanted to show that uh, you know he's very important to me, very special to me, and um, he was worth the effort. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. I hope uh, you liked the outcome. And uh, 
hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks or different ways to do things um, with hand tools only. It was a fun project, and um, I don't know if I'll ever do another project all hand tools, maybe. Um, but again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. And as always, I appreciate your likes, comments, and subscri subscriptions. Um, I reply to any and all comments that you guys post. So uh, please subscribe to uh, A to Z's Tiny Woodshop. Thanks for stopping by.